Has Israel gone boots on the ground in Gaza and is the main force of the invasion ready to storm the Strip? But is that exactly what Hamas wants? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. It's October 23rd, 2023. This is your unbiased Israel-Hamas conflict update. Let's let's get into it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the map here. Now, the biggest news that I think is most at least relevant today is, first off, you see uh, an Israeli soldier, right, being killed in the Kasifum uh, in a clash here between Israeli forces and Hamas, right? So a region, an area, literally it looks like like just maybe a kilometer outside of the Gaza border fence. Now, y- usually with these sort of conflicts, right, they may not take place in the village itself. They're more likely taking place outside of it, which is interesting because you can see just inside of Uh, An Israeli army soldier was killed and three injured during a recon operation within Gaza. They they admit the operation was planned to facilitate the invasion and gather intel on hostages and missing Israelis. So this is likely a special forces operation conducted within Gaza. This was probably either a security element that was followed outside or someone who was was, uh, securing their infill and exfill. Um, You can see as well... um, the Al Qassam brigades are reporting that they have also conducted um, what they're saying ambush an Israeli force. Uh, so this is likely maybe the is the uh, Hamas officials recognized Israeli special forces had infiltrated the gate and were conducting an operation. And as they exfilled, um, they ambushed probably the um, force. It's the uh, the uh, support by fire or the support element, right? Which is probably out here pulling security. Often these are non-special forces. Um, and then the special forces team, as they were returning to base, were likely caught in that situation. Now, I also want to point out uh, in the interest of, uh, of course, you guys know I'm always honest about calling out uh, bad behavior when I see it. And once again, you have the Al Qassam brigades uh, engaging in what probably is a war crime with bombing the city of Beersheba, targeting deliberately a civilian infrastructure. And it's sort of aggravating because one, they're proud of it. They're like, yeah, we targeted them. But you can see literally a few meters away is a military target that they were able to strike. Um, They said they targeted the Hatsarim Air Base. Now, Hatsarim Air Base, military target, good to go. Not not a war crime. Targeting the adjacent um, city is a war crime. And here's the kicker is that you if you're capable of hitting the air base, why would you not just throw more weapons at that? Right. Like instead, you actually deliberately diverted some of your rockets to a civilian center um, instead of using them to achieve actual military effects. Because remember, the Israeli warplanes probably are coming into Israel via some of these air bases. So it would actually provide Gazans like real. Uh, it would actually achieve immediate military effects, whereas throwing rockets at civilians isn't going to do that. All right. No matter who you are. Uh, sorry. Um, again, you can see throughout here, there's a bunch of these rockets being targeted uh, towards sites with no military value. Another civilian, uh, another civilian town, um, you know, outside the town of uh, Net- Netivat. But you could see it's one thing to engage in, again, it's to say, hey, we targeted this airbase. Some of our missiles went long and hit a civilian site. It's a tragedy, not a war crime. You try your best. Um, but the uh, deliberately targeting it is. Um, there's also, of course, uh, in Lebanon, you can see in a real escalation as well. Um, six Hezbollah members, right, uh, killed. Um, outside on the Lebanese border, Israeli airstrikes ramping up more and more, um, right? A total of 27 Hezbollah fighters killed in Israeli strikes since this conflict started. This looks more and more like a front line of this conflict and not a separate, uh, a separate conflict on its own, right? You can see Israeli airstrikes crossing the Lebanese border, um, really a sign that this is this there's an it is fair to say that this war is taking place in three places at this point the lebanese border in the west bank you can see here again you've got some uh a a uh, palestinian killed as well as 
uh, a, a young Palestinian man killed by Israeli army gunfire. Always kills me. Just say he was killed by the Israeli army. They're combatants. Like if they attack the Israeli army, there there are combatants within the law of war, you know? So, uh, and of course, you've got the final fire end of the war, which everyone knows in the Gaza Strip. Um, now, let's talk a little bit in greater detail about what's going on. Uh, first off, of course, the IDF spokesman coming out and saying, we're ready for the ground maneuver when the political echelon gives us the order. So again, if you've been on this channel, you know, it's not a secret. Uh, it was, the, the IDF was ready to go in and it was the political leadership that said, hey, you got to stop. We got to sort some stuff out. Now, there's additional rumors that actually it was the United States who said, hey, some of our citizens are held in Gaza. You have to give us a chance to get our citizens released at, from these hostages. Um, OSINT Defender here describing it. Several U.S. defense officials said the Israeli government notified them that their continuous requests for delays in regards to ground invasion uh, is be, are beginning to wear thin, but the DOD, uh, basically DOD still doesn't believe they, I think they mean themselves, are prepared for the major violence that's likely to erupt. Um, right? Uh, and of course, when the invasion uh the DOD still wants to be able to reposition some assets, troops, get them in a good defensive position, still identify targets. Um, the White House also wants to delay due to hostage negotiation between Hamas and Qatar, which they believe will fall through once the invasion starts. I think that's accurate, right? Um, because the ability to hold U.S. citizens hostage uh, in the event of a ground invasion is going to give Hamas a lot of political power. It's going to uh, humiliate the United States. Um, and ultimately you got to understand guys uh the longer this goes on the more i hear the more i believe uh that hamas wants the um u.s forces to invade remember there's a lot of things we've seen um there's 20 years of lessons from Iraq and Afghanistan that Iran has absorbed and has likely passed on to Hamas and Hezbollah about how to fight organized Western forces, and especially on your own turf. They're very good at it, right? The Taliban, remember, Taliban won in Afghanistan. They beat the United States. And so the Hamas wants to run the Taliban playbook or the Iraqi insurgent playbook or a combination of the two. This is going to involve drones. It's going to involve IEDs. It's going to involve um, corrupt officials who ostensibly work for or with the Israelis, but who really work for the Taliban. It's going to involve a lot of different things, but they only work is if the Israelis come onto Hamas's home turf. Um, that's insurgencies rely on these uh, informal networks, right? You, you want, you know, if an Israeli tank moving through a neighborhood, if you the, every neighbor there is going to be loyal to Hamas and disloyal to the Israelis. That means Hamas is going to know every time that tank moves, every uh, every soldier in the tank, um, they're going to know as, as, as much intel as there are eyes and Gazans in the area. But they need Israel to actually put boots on the ground. And so I think that is actually their whole meta strategy here. Uh, I think Hamas wanted to to the reason they engaged in these absolutely vicious terror attacks is because they wanted to bait the Israelis to invade Gaza, to go boots on the ground. Um, and once they do so, their plan is to inflict a lot more casualties. Uh, it's going to, I think they believe, humiliate Netanyahu. It's going to embarrass the Israelis. It's going to allow them to get, uh, to raise their own stock as Hamas. And it's going to, they believe, uh, they hope, uh, force the Israelis to the negotiating table in terms of increased Palestinian autonomy. Now, will it really happen? Uh, here's what I'll say. I don't know if all of those things will happen, but the Israeli prime minister uh, has said, quote, let's pull this up here, has said that um, this needs to be the last ground maneuver in Gaza. It's a bold statement. Simple reason that after it, there will be no Hamas. It will take a month, two months, three, but in the end, there will be no Hamas. Before the enemy meets the armor and infantry forces, it will meet the bombs of the Air Force. I'm under the impression that you know how to do it in a lethal, precise, very high quality way, as has been proven until now. That's a subjective statement. I understand. When you're the defense minister, you got to you gotta express confidence in your guys. Um, you don't want to uh, criticize them or be the person who's like giving them this criticism. Um, 
And in terms of their objectives, um, they're meeting it. Again, it's on the political leadership to provide the level of, to constrain the military, right? The military is going to, by definition, use all the tools the political leadership gives it to achieve its given objective. And it's on the political leadership to say, listen, you can't go here. You can't use this type of weapon. You can't engage in this level of behavior. Trust me, the U.S., we did it for 20 years in Afghanistan. We shelved a lot of our best weapons. We um, uh, mothballed some of our best tactics. Uh, we oftentimes deliberately would identify Taliban uh, bomb emplacers, and we would be instructed, don't kill them. Don't shoot them. Uh, it, you know, they believe they could get more intel out of them if they didn't, but that's that's what it means to be a soldier. Right. And that's what it means to be a politician is that you as a civilian in charge of the military have to put these guardrails on them. So I, I have no fault. I don't fault the military for doing their mission as best they can. Again, I fault the political leadership, but here's where I am going to fault them. This is naive. 90 days. You think you're going to clear a city of 7 million people in 90 days. It's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. Uh, Hamas is ready for you. Um, and the top comment here, top reply or whatever, at tweet or whatever, asks, has there ever been a single time in history that a war followed the proposed timeline? Spot on, guys. Um, Hamas has dug in uh, at a level and has learned so many lessons. This is not going to be Fallujah 2, um, okay? Fallujah 2 was... Uh, the, the Iraqi insurgents had no experience. They brought in so little capability that they... they if they had... If they refought Fallujah... In 2015, uh, it would have been a different fight. It would not have been the the you know month long or six week long battle that it that it was. Um, it would have been years. It would have been a total quagmire. Uh, and that's what I think Hamas is ready for. Uh, don't kid yourself. Hamas, Hezbollah, the Quds Force. That's a lot of expertise these guys bring to bear um, in these sort of efforts. And you really uh, should understand that. The, this is this is a recipe for disaster. You're going to see a lot of Israeli casualties. You heard it here first, guys. Anyway, um, and again, that's probably why they want such a massive bombing campaign because it's their best bet. They know this is going to be bad. They're gritting their teeth knowing this is going to be a disaster. That's why they're so aggressive and they're just eating all this criticism, right? Again, this isn't a justification, but this is how human beings who are basically good are a, a choo, you know make the choices they do and this is the israeli choice right um so anyway guys that's all i had uh the only thing i'd want to shout out if you're interested is i actually have a newsletter called the strategic sit rep it's um a uh, basically we curate national security stories but we report on them with no bias um we uh, look at some of the changes, for example, to the, you, we talk about in the most recent issue, the Avdivka offensive in Ukraine, um, especially uh, the political situation. We give you an unbiased summary of the actual news, and then we give you a so what. We also have, of course, an update on the Israel-Gaza situation, um, and again, providing you a so what. So it's a, it's a great way to get your once a week free digest of exactly what's going on in the national security space without all the hype and nonsense and, and hubbub. Uh, so if you're interested, check us out at strategicsitrep.com. Uh, links in the description are up here somewhere. All right. Thanks. See you guys.